The, um, the main question, you, you talk about the two tempos and you have the fantastic image of the raw meat and the cooked meat. Now, I work in a lot of journals, I work with a lot of editors, and I know that what a lot of them think is that they are so busy, desperately feeding raw meat to the tigers, there is simply no time to cook. Any answers for them? Uh, the answer is, you must make the time. This is like the student who says, well, I have two final exams, but I can only study for the history one. And I would say, well, you have two final exams, you've got to study for both of them. This is the same. And this is why reorganizing newsrooms is so important, because if you do, you find a way to do this. At the end of the day, you are in the kitchen and you're cooking basically the same recipe, is how you serve it. And so I don't buy the idea of we're so busy, we don't have time for this. You have to make the time, and I think it's possible. Absolutely. Excellent. The other key thing is you talk about the idea of a mobile editor, and in particular a mobile editor having the rank and the status that we're associating with managing editors, yeah. having that kind of power. Do you know anybody who actually does that realistically today? Well, I think that maybe the titles are different and so on, but you have them at Bloomberg, you have them at the Wall Street Journal, you have them at The Guardian, at The Telegraph, at The New York Times, major organizations. This needs to begin to filter down to regional newspapers. You know, they don't have the time to waste on this. But right now, it's all the biggies that already have it and in, in great positions, you know, and they are respected and this is how they are effecting change in these places. But you don't see them so much in the regional press or in the local press. The regionals and locals would say, you talk about two tempos, for them there's a third tempo, which is the regional tempo. Everyone that I would speak to would say that it's, it's okay talking about The Guardian, they can afford to play with right, things. Right. The, the big New York based papers can afford to play with things. But the little regional papers would say, number one, they, they barely have the staff that is. Number two, for them, mobile is still very much a junior thing. I don't think they believe their audience is seriously mobile yet. Are they simply wrong? Should they hurry up or they do they have work to a different pace? I think that they need to, but their emphasis then, whether it's curated or 24 seven, is the local stories and the local sports because the other material is available. If you are a person um, in the UK, you're gonna get all, all of this from the national newspapers. But the local newspaper, if you are in a community in the middle of the countryside, that newspaper needs to do all that we're talking about for local and regional, because nobody else will do The other thing about feeding the tiger, you pointed out yourself, uh, those of us who came from a text-based, journalistic, traditional background, hate to go with what we've got, we want to wait till we've got the full story. Now there's the pressure, as you said, go with what you've got. Most journalists are afraid of getting it wrong, getting it incomplete. What do you say to them? What about that fear? Well, the idea is that if you don't put it out there, somebody else will. And so you go, I mean, to do a tweet on a story, a plane has just crashed, uh, chances are that if this happened, you're not dealing with facts, you're not dealing with anything yet. And normally newspapers protect themselves by not, for example, in an early tweet saying, five dead, because you don't know this for sure. But they, you know, you deal with the bare bones of the story. You know, we understand that a train has just crashed at the corner of so and so. That's all. So, I mean, it really, I understand what you're saying because I am old enough to remember how it is and how it was. But you need to realize that in, in the journalism of interruptions and everywhere in this, um, if you don't do this, the person who witnessed the train crash is going to do it. So you have to get your brand out there to say it as well. And finally, in terms of cold meat, one of the quickest ways of getting hold of cold meat to feed the tigers is to use somebody else's cold meat. Where do you stand on UGC? Is it something we need to get over the worries of and get into? You mean to, uh, to take material from somebody else? Well, no, user-generated user content, rather than taking it from rivals, but taking it directly from the millions yeah, of social networks. Yeah, the person networks. who witnessed it, yeah. I think that more and more we see them doing that, but there you have to verify. And you have to make sure that, uh, uh, to me, that content is usually uh, secondary and it's an accessory, like we would use a quote or we would use you know, a witness, but not uh, take a car blanche uh, the first time you get it. So you still have to verify. Okay. Thank you very much indeed.